Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and alternative life coach. A little while ago, I recorded a conversation I had with Adrian Inkledon Weber. Now, Adrian is a good friend of mine and I learned a lot about house healing from him. He's the author of the book, Heal Your Home, which has become known as the Bible of Geopathic Stress. I learned a lot from Adrian and, and my work is based upon his method. So this book is a good investment, along with Spirit and Earth, of course, our jointly written book. But what I wanted to say was that the house healing modality, for all therapists, for example, it's a really good additional aid to the healing work that you're doing with your client because it gets in at a really fundamental level. And apart from anything else, what's the point of helping a person if they go back to the old patterns in their house every time they leave your therapy center? Okay, so here we are in conversation talking about all sorts of things, including the way that we work with clients. One of the, the, the difficult things with house healing is that really somebody will come to you, as they do to me, mm. and they say, uh, this is my problem, this is the issue, can you help? What's going to happen? How will it end up? And you have to say... For the benefit of the family. Uh, and it, it will do, it, it, but it, it's... It's never a straight line between A to B or A to Z, whatever it may be. You know, there will always be problems along the way. You know, it cannot be possibly solved on day one. Sometimes it's a very quick fix, and, and I'm sure you've you found exactly the same thing, that, you know, you, you, you do the healing work and you get the phone call a couple of days later or a week later or whatever else, talk through the report or talk through what's happened, and they say, everything's changed. Perfect, we don't need you anymore, thanks very much indeed. But generally, um, you like me, you're kind of in it for the long run in some ways. You know, it's that, it's it's you need to get that feedback from people. You then get into a, almost a counselling with them, because there will be some big changes happening. If it doesn't happen, now I've had phone calls um, over the years to say, well, nothing's happened. You've got the report through, you know. So what's supposed to happen? And I think this is where the humbleness comes in um, that that Hamish would always talk about that. Um, you're there and you're thinking, I can't do it anymore. Because mm. I think you're only as good as your last healing in some mm. ways or your last um, mm. work on, on somebody in the house. And I often will then get the pendulum out and just sort of douse to say, well, has it started yet? No. Right. OK, is it going to be one of those families that actually need to be hit between the eyes by this healing so they can actually experience it, you know, in te glorious technicolour, you know, and yes, it's going to be that way. So is it going to be one day, two days, three days? So I get a phone call in three days. Uh, yeah, if they can use the phone, they've obviously gone down with flu or some sort of dreaded cold, which again is that big release that happens. So it can work in so many different ways for so many different people. But you know full well that it will work for the benefit of the family. But there's obviously some changes going to happen before uh, they, they realise that the, the total um, extent of it all. Yeah. So, so really, what you're saying there is that. Uh, I mean, how often would you do you think? Because you work with a lot of clients. Sure. Um, how often do you? Th so, what sort of percentage do you feel of your client base actually goes? Things get worse before they get better. I've never worked it out. Maybe I should look at that one day and say well, it's fifty percent, forty percent, whatever. Um, I think probably most will experience some form of discomfort. Um, fairly mild, you know, it can be flu-like symptoms for a couple of days. Uh, perhaps the family might be at loggerheads for a couple of days. Um, you'll sometimes find incredibly vivid dreams will happen for four or five, six days. Um, the house, you know, the, the dog might suddenly go berserk and be very unsettled. Sleep patterns might be disturbed. Um, mood swings. Um, right. or, so things like that. So it's, it's not going to be anything bad. They're not going to come down with the plague. But at the same time, I think in some ways they need to see these things happening so that they know things are beginning to change within the family. So that's quite a broad cross-section of, of, of change there, isn't it? So, but I guess, uh, you know, what you've taught me is that, that you ask, you're looking for signs of change. Yep. It's not necessarily a sign of improvement straight away, it's a no. sign of change. And that process of um, once you've done the, he the first healing and the rebalancing work, then getting feedback from the client is, oh. is really, really valuable, isn't it? It is. And you'll, I, I know that you know, it, it's, a, it's a thing that I get quite a kick from as well, um, that you, know, you start having some of the feedback from people, you start talking to them, and as they... They almost begin to unfold even further, because mm. normally when I doubt, I don't necessarily want to know what the problems are. Yeah. 
So if somebody comes and saying, well, the kids aren't sleeping, they find maybe a ghost problem, in which case mm. you do a soul rescue, and that's fine. But in other cases, if you know too much about them, um, mm. it, it, it's, not, it's not the wrong thing to do, but I like to have a clean sheet of paper just to be able to concentrate on what I find. And it's amazing when you'll suddenly find something, and I know you've done it several times, when you're thinking, that cannot possibly be yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And then you put it down in the report, and they come back saying, how did you know? Yeah. How yeah. can you pinpoint it so accurately mm. to the date that that problem happened? Yeah. I think my, the things that I tend to find like that tend to not be uh, sort of like personal things within the life. Uh, so when I say personal, I mean in relation to the person. I think uh, um, what I have found is very specific things within a property. So you know, okay. marking specific points, and you say, well, why, why, what, what have you got there? You know, have you got something like a symbol or you know a, a healing symbol or whatever? Yep. So I've come across those several times, um, and that is always um, uh, you know amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're, I think we're both still quite surprised by. Um, the fact that any of this works, I mean, that's a terrible thing yeah, to say. Yeah, I know, I know. But I know. It's, it's, not, it's not about whether it works or not. I have to correct that. It's not about whether it works and being amazed that it works. We know it works. Mm. We know that. And, we, you know, this is why there's so much energy healing work in its different types. Yep. There is a, there's something happens, mm. right? So we know that works. What's amazing with this dousing work and working with a floor plan is the is sometimes how specific it can be. Yep. And I think that's what's gobsmacking, yes. is how specific it can be. But again, yeah. you know, we have yeah. to relate <clears throat> there through looking at things like, um, um, you know, the, the, the American military, looking at remote viewing mm. techniques. Yep. And that what they are looking, what you know, they... <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds bonkers because you start to get into kind of conspiracy theory stuff and you think, well, hang on, where's all this going? It's easy but, to drift into but that But the one, fact yeah. is that they, they did spend a lot of money mm. in the military, both in Russia and America, looking at the possibilities of remote viewing. Mm. And some of it was done with some degree of success. Anyway, point being that there is a process that happens and you can find very specific information. There's also, uh, obviously, as you're the, 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 you've got a client um, healer sort of confidentiality mm. thing going yes. on all the time anyway, yep. but also you, you as a healer are respecting that person's privacy anyway. You have to. Yeah, exactly, yep. exactly. So there's no fear of sort of like, you know, suddenly, you know, any kind of big revelation coming through. For... Mm, you'll, you'll get them. Yeah, well, I, I realise, but, but, but I guess what I'm getting at is for somebody that's watching this is thinking, oh, I might have my house, he, you know, healing work done. Yep. The, some people are very, very private about things that have happened to them. Of course. And quite rightly so. Yeah. And that doesn't go anywhere, uh, even if you come across it. And most of the time, you actually don't need to know the detail anyway, yeah, is exactly. really what you're saying. Yeah, actually. it just clears naturally. You know, sometimes you'll find that, you know... I've, I've had phone calls from people, from, from women and men, saying, can you, can you tell me if my wife's having an affair or my husband's no. having an affair? No. No. Or, you know, my, my, my daughter's gone walkabout now, we don't know where she is, can you find her? And I say, no, I can't. And they're quite surprised by that, but I'm saying it was her choice. Mm. Unless she's been kidnapped, in which case you need sure. to look at it and you'll hopefully get somebody will say, you need to look at this. But there, there was one lady's son who, who went walkabout, didn't know where, where, he, where he was. And I said, look, no, I can't find him, but what I can do is do a, maybe do a healing on him. We'll send some healing thoughts his way perhaps do a clearing of some other stuff that, that, that made him leave yeah, home in the first place. Yeah. And then it's then up to him to make his own decision as to whether he wants to come back or not. But, you know, we have free will. Yeah. And, you know, for me to then say, oh, he's in this motel outside Boroughbridge, whatever, and they go knock on the door and he's aghast or he's with somebody they don't want, yeah. you know, you're, you're interfering with private lives. And that's not what we do. Mm. Yeah, we can dip into lives so much when you're doing <clears> dowsing <throat> work or, or connecting with, with, with upstairs. But a lot of stuff, you know, you, the, if, if the family are reading the report, they don't want to know what's happened in their mum's no, life or their exactly. dad's life. So, yeah, exactly. you know, you just have to yeah. be very circum very careful yeah. about what you put in. Yeah. And actually, interestingly, just going back on that point about locating missing people, you know, there are 
are dowsers that can do that and dowsers that specialise in doing that. Yeah. But of course, those sort of people tend to work with police forces or those that are actually looking for them in an official capacity. So it's not about the fact that it can't be done. What you, again, what you're saying is that it's a privacy issue, and it's a, and from your point of view as a healer, it's more about adjusting the energy of the circumstance yep. so that a resolution will come through that way. So the person will return home in their own, yeah, under their own it's, free will. It seems to be the, the only right way of doing it. You know, um, if I wanted to go off privately for a couple of days somewhere, then fine. Yeah, I don't expect Alison to come knocking on the door to say, "Wait, why are you why are you in a hotel room by yourself? I just need some time by myself." Um, you know, it's important that we do recognise that in ourselves. Yeah.